What does that mean? So you six years total. So if if for anything happened major in that second six, uh, that second, second three years, they would have they would have shut me so out. So even when you said I'm not going to West Point, you were inactive on duty. Yeah. Yeah. They they basically sent me back to Fort Hood after I declined that appointment. I was in Fort Hood for about a year. Did they guilt you? Did they bust your balls? Mm -hmm. Really? Yeah, definitely. So they had uh, they had brass pull you into their office and say, you know, you're throwing something away here. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. And you were what like, are you doing? Yeah, I'm, I'm making the right choice. What I'm doing? Yeah, look at you. You're you're a disappointment to the country. I'm so well adjusted now. So <laughs> <definitely. laughs> but were you as smart? Did you ever cause any trouble then? Uh, no, not really. I had a I had a good time, kind of. I mean. The weird thing about the military is that, uh, especially in the army at that time, uh, you're kind of coasting in a way. You realize when you're looking at those things now that you don't like look back. Yeah. There, there were things that they were training us for that we weren't about to do for another 10 to 15 years. Uh, but they were training us for that. Like what? Uh, desert training. Oh, really? And we, you know, we're talking about only a few years out of Vietnam, and we weren't doing any kind of like swamp training at all, desert training. Oh really? So they were, we're done with the with swamps. Yeah, we were in we, were, we were yeah, we were we were desert training in nineteen seventy. So they knew that. Yeah, they knew, they knew what was going on. Really? Yeah. That's, and do you, do you realize that in retrospect? In retrospect. Absolutely. As soon as I saw us going into the into the Gulf War, I would have been a I would have been a lieutenant. Uh -huh. I would have been a lieutenant uh, the first Gulf War of uh, the Persian War. Uh huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Ninety eight, ninety. You were you were out. You're already out. Uh, you know, way out, right? How when you get out? 85. So 88 was my second, end of sentence. Sort of under the just under just under the radar. You know? Wow, man. So all right. So the, you, you turned down West Point, and, and what made you decide to go to art school? I mean, what was I mean, what I was kind of been that guy. He was back on like a kid, like he had that weird little appetite for books. They had to go out. Yeah. Like, Look at a bad page. Like, what do you want to do? Yeah. And I, don't, I always had on there artist and so on. I checked them. I checked too. I don't know why. I think that. Uh, I think I've never heard that as a title, but I think it's a good title for something. Mm -hmm. Artist soldier. It's sort of a frightening idea. Martial art. Sure. So okay. So you uh, so you did the soldier thing. So now you're like I've got to check that other one off. Artist. <laughs> this is a kindergarten dream. Yeah. I'm not going to sell that kid out. I'm painting. God damn it. <laughs> Shut up. I'm painting. So what did you study in art school? Uh, sculpture, uh, printmaking. Sculpture? Yeah. Did you do some sculpture? No. I chased a lot of other art schools. Girls? Maybe. Yeah, whatever. I'm married now. Yeah. Yeah. No. No, I just like, I just did okay, art. Okay, man, you can't, the past is the past, right? The past is the past. You know, you say that, but they will hold you responsible for that past. Yeah, absolutely. Go into it, yeah. yeah. No, I just painted. Mm -hmm. <laughs> No sculpture, just painting. So it was, it was actually visual work that you did. Yeah, it was, a, it was, a, it was kind of. As it turns out, the one I went to, uh, I went to one in Michigan, uh, just because I figured I was closer. At least be able to visit my dad during, uh, during school. Um, but it turns out it was more of a design, you know, uh, computer aided design and design and uh, the advertising design sure. kind of school. So there was a small, like, rebellious fine arts section in that school, and I was part of that. Uh -huh. Rebel, rebel. Team. And what were you painting? What were what were your particular? I was doing more like that. Too. My my biggest thing I was doing was printmaking. I really enjoyed like laying out uh, using copper plates and doing yeah, yeah, yeah. all the etching and stuff. Uh -huh. Just like I, I like the process. So I like right. the idea of like you know taking this blank piece of copper, coming up with some kind of image, and then somehow figuring out a way to get this on paper. Right. With all these things that could go wrong in the process. The chemicals where yeah. you had to, to flip the thing out, those plates, and you had to do two colors. You had to line them up. Were you doing art prints, or were you doing yeah, like posters, or anything? No, just real nice pieces of like small uh, handmade paper. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah that's how we got the prints. And 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 that, you, where are those? Uh, I have them in a drawer somewhere. I did, you know, I did, you know. Hey man, them. when the shit hits the fan, right. I see an art show. This is some <laughs> high price shit. The early print. Maybe I can get in uh, wherever you know, Paul Stanley's showing his crap. Oh boy, lucky you. <laughs> <I can't. laughs> what does he show? There's different pictures of uh, animals and what is a wig. Yeah, yeah. Uh, All right, so you're doing that, you're digging that, and then, you know, like, uh, wh when did you give yourself the name Maynard? Uh, just after high school. Yeah. Like it was, was that, what, what oh, was some, of the, some of that crap poetry I was writing, like, had a, a, a character 
Yeah. band and I'm you know in fact I listened to it in the car and we're here 
Yeah. Just because that's just such a nice trip down memory lane. But yeah. It was a solid amount of work that was going right. on in that town. So there's a little scene. There's several little clubs around the area all the way to, to North Muskegon, all the way up, you know, the, down to... So they were regional areas. heroes. Yeah, yeah. It was a, and they rocked you know, hard. Yeah, awesome. Yeah. yeah. And they kind of influenced you? Yeah, absolutely. Like, the band like that. You know, there's several, several in the area that had some really interesting things that they were doing. But they were taking they were taking hard rock and and sort of the beginning of metal and building something else. Yeah, they were like the they were the original. They're kind of like if you look back at the guys, they were kind of like no offense to these guys, but they were kind of the original history douchebags before right. before you were referred to people as history douchebags. But not so but like in a good way. Like they were like the guys who actually were like trying to you know just live a simple life. life. Yeah. Right. Not like not putting on the simple life. Or I'm just trying to figure out what arc, uh, where on the hipster arc are we talking? We're not talking like precious haircuts, uh, precious haircuts, and, and no. songwriting. We're, we're talking like uh, sort of uh, off the grid. Like we're fucking off. We're real shopping. Deal artists. Shopping at Goodwill and Goodwill is actually Goodwill, right? And just out of necessity and just being like kind of somewhere between Hesher and uh, just like simple living, right? Like right, simple right. living dudes that yeah. like simple living dudes, right? But long hairs. Yeah, yeah, kind of long hair, yeah, yeah, yeah. but but not like dumb, not effective. They were smart. They were right. like going to go on to college. They were going to do these sure. things, and yeah. not from a huge, like you know, ex extremely rich background. Just like, just kind of kids right. who were just trying to find their way. Did you, know? you did you gravitate at all towards? I, I imagine I mean, it might be a little late already, but I mean, was the the uh, Husker Du and the and replacements and were they around then, or um, it just wasn't on your radar? Right, right, right around the same. Because this is like this is eighty. Right to '88, right era. So very like right in the middle of it all. Like right, you know, I'd already seen Black Flag in, in Texas. With Rollins, in the, uh, yep. Uh, back in Texas in the army. So I saw I saw that stuff happen. But right as all that kind of was ending, was when this was kind of happening. So on the heels of the break right. of the Black Flag. So Black Minor Flag was already out. I, I think right, we were almost on the way to Fugazi. Uh huh. You know. So Black Flag as a guy in the army must have been sort of like, ah, oh, this is something. Yeah, that could happen. <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? Because he's got that. He's he's a very regimented dude. I don't know how that he had the hair. He had longer, longer hair, but yeah. he was always pretty intense and yeah. seemed to take care of himself. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He's. A, I had him in here. He's. A, he can talk. He'll he'll chat you up for a bit. Yeah. Yeah. He'll keep going. You actually have to you know turn him off <laughs> eventually. Like, All right, Henry. Okay. Okay. Where's where's the knob? He's a good guy though. All right, so that, no, so, okay. oh yeah, yeah, no, he's a very earnest and uh, decent dude. Um, so then you started doing it, just singing. You never were a player? I mean, uh, you play? I actually played a little bit of bass, yeah. uh, not well. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, then kind of went on to kind of doing a little bit of my own singing uh, in those bands. And then the Grand Rapids is a very, you know, as, you, as, the, as I got into it a little farther, uh, it's a very cozy place to live. The rents are low, the families are kind of tight. A lot of the guys didn't have that. You were talking about that hang of the drive, like that outlet. Yeah. I didn't have to run anymore. I was doing more of the, the, the screaming. And I kind of wanted, I had a drive. I wanted to do more of that. We also were, you know, stifling a lot of baggage from, you know, baptism. And, right. And, uh, so, but those guys didn't need to do The guys I was in band with didn't need that. They were, like, living at home. They didn't care. They were okay. Yeah, they were fine. Yeah. Uh, you know, yeah. It looked a little bit like the kids from, you know, the Columbine. Oh, yeah. Kind of yeah. They were, you know, they were good kids, and they were going to go on to do stuff that was, you know, stable, but very family. So they had, didn't have the same desire. So I gave, I gave it up. I didn't like After a while, I just, like, quit. I didn't want to do it again. Because my experience was, like, wanting to do it and then not having anybody around me that wanted to do it with me to go to the next level was kind of disappointing. So I kind of just stopped, and I went to work in Boston at a pet store. Wait, so uh, in Boston? Yeah. Where? Uh, it used to be called... Uh, Boston Pet Center was down on First Street, down across from Beach Man. Oh, okay, over at Beach Man. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because yeah. 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 I had a relationship with a parent uh, in oh, Alston. Alston. Alston, Alston, okay. There was a pet store, like they had this blue macaw. Yeah, it was, it was probably Bobo. Yeah? Bobo, the big blue macaw. Yeah. Do you know that parent? Most likely it was the one that came from Boston Pet Center when I was there from you, you, you yeah. seriously know the parrot I'm talking about? Bobo. Yeah, Bobo, the, the highest macaw, yeah. But there's only a, like a handful of, the, of, the, of those highest macaws in Boston, and the largest pet store in that area was on First Street. It was, this one was up in Coolidge Corner. Okay. 
and there was just you walk in, that dude was there. And I'd go in there and I'd hang out with that parrot. Yeah, I got to the point where that thing would flip over on a branch and I would just put my hands out and he would let go and fall into my hand on his back. So you spent a lot of time building a relationship with birds. Yes. All right, so you go from rock and roll. <laughs> Where's this going? It's good. <laughs> no, I like it. I like it. Yeah, this is this is actually exciting to me. So here you are. You're fucking you know, filled with fury. You're singing your fucking guts out. And you got a bunch of dudes that are like, nah, we're gonna hang out. And you're like, well, fuck it. So you end up going to Boston just to, to live a pet store dream. Why'd you end up in Boston? I had a friend from high school who moved out there. Had a good job. Uh, he worked at uh, this wine shop in the north end of Boston, at Martinetti's. Yeah, I know. I know Martinetti's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I used to work there. Uh, so he turned me on to like wine and stuff. But I basically just kind of went out there to get out of Grand Rapids. job at the pet store? Clean up merchant. That was it? Yeah, basically. Eventually I ended up becoming the, the merchandising manager. I took over like all the, all the layout of how the store looked and all the ordering of uh, products and stuff like that. Yeah. And I was sure. Do they have, what, they, they have birds? they have other animals? Yeah, it's an insane uh, fish department, like the saltwater fish department. It's pretty amazing. Oh yeah? Yeah. Like those arowanas? Yeah, they, they, they had all the big ones. ones. Yeah, they had all they had all the crazy stuff. Like people would come in from miles to get some of the saltwater fish. It was huge. It was like it was kind of like the size, of, twice the size of a pet land nowadays, but like with actual cool stuff. Right. In it, oh, like uh, privately owned. Uh, you yeah. know, so they they cater to unique stuff. Monkeys? No monkeys? No monkeys. Dogs? Dogs. But we ended up. I was kind of like instrumental in having them stop that because they just were the puppy big, farm. Yeah, we're getting close to puppy farms. So I kind of like was like we should probably stop this. This is just this doesn't feel right. Yeah, and the birds, they were legit though? Yeah, they were all legit. A lot of them were uh, like hand-raised, hand-farmed, like uh, U.S. U.S. born and raised. Uh -huh. uh, weird. Uh -huh. Out of the California area. Are you pretty, are you a pretty animal you guy? Used to be, yeah. Yeah. So, you get, so you're, you're handling parrots, mm -hmm. and you're, you're building nice things in the store. For the I, had a, I had a, an employee there. Well, not that, yeah. 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 but uh, as, a, as a friend, just yeah. to see where I was, to yeah. see if I had a similar sense of yeah. And he was like, you know, Mark was trying to be flustered. Yeah. You know, some, some authorities came in there and they said that they accused me of uh, uh, kissing parents. I was like, well, why would they accuse you? They goes, I said, no, I would never, I would never kiss a parent. Maybe a cockatoo. Yeah. Like okay, I just want this. <laughs> you got it. Yeah. I yeah. Like, I like, and in all the comedy that I've been involved in, like, isn't I did like fully clotheslined, right? <laughs> yeah. You know, right in front Boom. of a bunch of customers. Yeah, you got it. Okay. Was yeah. there a big laugh? It was a big growl. Did you take it? You yeah. took it well. I, I took it well. All right, well, yeah. All right, so we better get to the fucking rock and roll. So, like, <laughs> at, what, at what point did you? Oh, but, I'm not avoiding the rock and roll. I'm no, just I don't. You. No, it's all right. I think it's a good. We're laying a good bit of groundwork yeah. here. So the, you, you have this relationship with parrots, and um, you're in Boston. I'm just getting a picture. The younger Maynard working with parrots. <laughs> Your friend talks to you about wine, so that plants a seed somehow. Yeah. Is that where that seed got planted? Yeah, absolutely. Martinelli's? Martinetti's, yeah. Martinetti's. You walk in, and you're like, holy fuck, this is a whole world. Yeah. Well, you know, it's, it was the weekend thing. When it would be, well, you know, weekday in the summer at that point, up on his roof, like, grilling some food and opening a bottle of wine, kind of like, there's something to this, whatever this is, I, there's something that's like really resonating with me on this kind of family ritual yeah. level of making food and drinking and wine. Oh, really? And also, there, I, in my mind, when I when I start to know more about you, it seems that there's a, there's also a sort of a, a precision to it, there's an art to it, and there's like a, it's a historical thing. I mean, making wine is as old as anything right but maybe i was reading into that no yeah all right so then where does tool come in what is that first or the first band you were in uh i ended up uh moving out to la because i had an opportunity to come out and do the similar kind of uh layout in the stores pet like stores pet store stuff oh. out in, and out in the la area so you were on the you were on the fast track to being a big pet store guy yeah Okay. It was mostly because I could come in and kind of renovate the stores and kind of lay them out properly. But in, in that, for example, like one of my one of my early you know, uh, triumphs, whatever, uh, 
back then I would make them put the all the larger dog food bags, all the dogs were kind of more the, toward the back of the store. Mm -hmm. And I got basically re like yelled at most of the time by yeah. the employees, like, what are you doing? I gotta carry this bag of dog food all right. the front of the store. But now that's standard. You go into like any of the pet lands, it's like more toward the back because they want you to walk by all the toys. So yeah. all, the, all the crap that you're gonna pick so up. So you did that? Well, I was, you know, I'm sure there's a bunch of people doing it at the same time that was thinking in terms of like, how do I keep the person in the store longer? make them go back to the back of the seat to get the thing they need. Right. I would imagine that, that nobody, you know, I, I'm, not, I'm not saying I've got a scoop here. <laughs> <laughs> but I would imagine that most people are going back to, back to get that big bag of dog food mm -hmm. and are walking back on, fuck, hey, look at that chew bum. Right. They're not giving you credit. No. You don't get credit for no. that. You get shit for covering no quarter, yeah. but no one's singing your praises. Right. In the pet store community. On the whole chew bum pickup. Yes. I invented the chew bone pickup. That was me, man. The squeaky, the squeaky toy. Yeah, pickup. yeah, I, I invented that. Back in the